What's up, everyone, and welcome to Next in Dev, a podcast where I'll discuss topics and news about modern web development. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about my experience with Claude Code over the past 30 days. For those who don't know, Claude Code is an AI tool by Anthropic that allows you to use your CLI to communicate with an LLM. You can use this to code projects both large and small, ask it questions about development, or implement new things that you may not quite know how to do, all within your command line, and even in some cases in your IDE. Claude Code is available to anyone on a paid plan with Claude, though access and usage may be limited on those with less expensive plans. Now, I used the $200 per month version of Claude Code for 30 days, and I used it extensively. And I wanted to share with you today my thoughts. My first thought is that I suck at prompting. I went into this not really thinking that prompting was a real skill. Like I have used ChatGPT, I have used Perplexity, I've used all of these other AI chatbot tools, and I've just typed and conversed with it and tried to figure out like how to actually make it work. But for that, that was mostly conversational. For Claude Code, it's been a little bit different. Like. I understand that prompting is a little bit more of a skill now. You're not just considering your input, you're considering your output as well. And so I started to develop this skill where I'm now able to really think through my entire question from my desired state to all of the details that I think my AI assistant needs to know. It took me a little while to get detailed enough to where I could get Claude to get close to where I wanted to be. It never really quite got there. I kind of gave up on the one-shotting code with Claude code idea, but it did get me pretty close and it helped me communicate better through my prompting. Using the planning tool helped me a lot in this because I was able to just list out everything I wanted for a project, and then I would tell Claude, go and make me a plan. Sometimes I would ask it to store that plan because I know that its context window is limited, but regardless, I would have it write out this plan, I would review the plan, I would check the sample code, and then I would just tell it to go. But first we would go back and forth, like an actual planning meeting. I was able to tell it, no, I don't think that'll work, or can we do this a different way? Oh, I didn't quite mean it like that. In fact, with the, the planning tool, it helped me to understand how Claude was interpreting what I was putting in. So I could think that I was inputting clean and good data, but when I got back something that was just not quite what I was looking for, I was able to see that in real time and communicate with Claude and again, just say, mm, that's not quite right. Let's try a different direction. My second takeaway from my 30 days with Claude code is that you need to understand code in order to get the best results. I've said this a couple times to people I've been talking with about it. I don't know how people who don't know how to code are making anything in Claude code. Like I get you can go to V0 or some other front end AI tool and then have it link up with Claude code and have Claude figure out the back end, but that's just a hassle. Trying to figure out how to make all these tools communicate like I needed to know how these things worked in order to make that happen. I don't know how people are building these great things without any kind of knowledge about code because I felt that the code that I understood and the code that I know helped me make better projects. It helped me to guide the AI in ways that I know the project needed to go. Like for example, payload CMS, sometimes the docs aren't quite clear on how to reach the end goal of what you're trying to do. I've been making payload videos for six, seven months now, so I understand how payload is supposed to work. And so here I am trying to get the AI to understand the same things that I know about payload, but I have to feed it that information. And not only do I need to feed it that information the first time, I need to repeat that information because it doesn't hold on to that context for longer than the session. So as Claude was feeding back to me information about what I wanted to do, I could see that the payload CMS code was just wrong. So I was able to stop it in the midst, but if you don't know code and you don't know the product that you're making and you don't know the technology you're using, how do you catch that ahead of time? At some point, I feel that there does still need to be a developer in the mix. And I will say that I have never been one to think that AI is going to replace humans. Humans still need to be a part of the entire creative process because without the human, Claude can't do anything. In this same takeaway, I could tell that Claude worked better in mature projects with more context. 
Like starting a project from scratch is not easy with Claude. Another example with Payload, Claude didn't quite understand like the fine pieces of little bits of information that you need to make a Payload CMS project work. And it wasn't just doing the NPX create Payload app, it was trying to build a Next.js app and then add in payload later. I needed to be able to guide it and understand that the direction that I'm heading is a new payload project, here's what we need. But that doesn't happen in existing established projects. I was able to have it do a quick initialization, it was able to understand the project, it was able to understand the general patterns of the project, and then it was able to build out the project with less guidance. Still needed a lot of guidance, but I was able to say, hey, I want this to look like that. It was able to take the code, reformat it, refactor it into what I needed it to be, and came up with a actual working project afterwards. And I will say on that, if you're developing with Claude code, always try to have it build the project before you move on. It will ship bad code. My biggest frustration in having Claude do anything is when I was trying to get it to do things that I wasn't really certain on how to do. Because again, it's going to ship bad code. And if I can't tell it how to fix that code, it's just the blind leading the blind. Another example, I wanted to self-host my project. I didn't really know how to self-host, I kind of understood a little bit, I knew which software to use, which hardware to get. The problem I ran into is I wanted to get Plausible self-hosted with Docploy. I was like, okay, well, I don't really understand how to do that, but let's see if Claude can get me there. And so I'm talking with Claude and Claude over and over and over again, kept just telling me, buy the hosted version of Plausible Analytics. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because I know I can self-host this and I know it shouldn't be this difficult. Turns out Plausible does have a lot of templates for Docploy and Coolify, so I was just able to use that instead of just arguing with Claude. One last thing on this topic, Claude will default to making so many scripts. Like if you needed to do anything, it'll always default to create a new file. So by the time that you're done after about 30 minutes of coding, you're likely going to have 10 new scripts that all just do very discreetly different things. So always be on the lookout for those and make sure that they actually do what you need them to do. One of the big benefits I got from Claude is that I'm no longer really worried about the implementation of something. Like I can go to minimal viable product so fast now. And that's largely in part to the fact that Claude fills in a lot of the gaps in my knowledge. I'm able to just say, hey, Claude, can we get this done? Claude comes up with something and then I can argue with Claude for a little bit and see if it's actually something that's feasible. If it's feasible, I'm able to reverse engineer it, make it better, and then introduce it into my product. In the past, I shrunk back from projects that would have stretched me, that would have taken a lot of time and effort to learn how to do. But now I just prompt Claude, hey, can we get this done? It shoots out some code, I check the code and I make sure that it works and then I've got a new project ready to go, ready for me to have developed even further. I will say though, if that is all you leave it as, you're not gonna learn anything, you're not gonna get better, you're just going to continue staying where you are. And that's because we learn by doing. We do learn through the struggle. So I wanna be clear here that when I use Claude to code something, I'm still reverse engineering it to make sure that it works and to understand how it works. My fourth takeaway is that Claude is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. There is so much nuance and so many different pieces and parts of this product that just are not immediately clear. I mean, using the CLI tools, that's a breeze. That's very intuitive and really easy to use. But then there are things like MCP servers. Understanding that you have to reconfigure that MCP server for every single project you're going to use. I use context seven and I had to add it to every project. Here I was thinking that it was just added globally to all my projects. And so I'm moving on to, from project to project. Some have MCP servers, others don't. Another one I mentioned earlier, the planning mode. You have to know it's there and it's not exactly clear. Maybe it is in some documentation that I didn't read, but hitting shift tab a couple times gets you into the planning mode. You should have Claude memorize certain things that you do quite often, but you have to know how to prompt Claude to memorize it. If you use the shift three, that's the pound sign. I had to look at my keyboard. 
but that's the pound sign. That's how you get Claude to memorize things. And then you have to know, do I want this in user storage? Do I want this in local storage? Do I want this in temporary storage? But again, you have to know that that is something that you need to do. Another thing that's not immediately clear is that you need to eventually compact your chat. So using the compact command or just waiting until it compacts for you, this makes it so your context can carry from context window to context window. But as you get closer to the end of your context window, the quality of the code can degrade. So you need to choose where you want to compact. Some people say after each chunk of a project, some people say more towards like the bottom double digits, like 10 to 15% of context remaining. Nothing is really worse than being in the middle of a task and then having your chat compact. Overall, I just wasn't really going into it thinking I was going to have to do as much research as I had to do. This next takeaway is a little context dependent, I think, and that's you should take it slow with Claude instead of giving it a big list. Now again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about more mature projects versus new projects, but I found that when I was starting a new project, I did need to spend a lot of time just focused in on one task with Claude. But for bigger projects, I was able to give it a full list of here's what I want to accomplish, let's make it happen. And it was able to do a pretty good job with that. In general though, I did get better results when I was able to focus in and expand upon one task at a time or two tasks at a time rather than anywhere between 10 and 12 tasks at a time. My sixth takeaway from this is that it's kind of like coaching your seven-year-old nephew. You have to be extremely clear and concise with Claude for it to do what you want it to do. While this sounds like a downside, I learned how to communicate so much better by talking to Claude. I know how to talk to developers better. I know how to write better. I can write more concisely and coherently. My seventh takeaway is not unique to Claude. It's that Claude is your biggest fan. The same thing happens with ChatGPT. It happens with every AI chatbot. You say something that is really very not good and ChatGPT, Claude, they hype you up. Oh, what an amazing thought. I love that. Let's make it happen. You're so good. You are the smartest developer to ever walk the earth. And then you actually look at what you wrote and you're like, oh man, that would never work. And so you have to be careful here not to fall into the hype. Don't let Claude hype you up too much because it always thinks you are right. And you are not always right. I'm not always right. And so we need to understand that as we work with AI in general, but Claude specifically. Eighth on my list is that Claude can often forget what it's doing. As you get closer to the context window closing, as I mentioned before, things just feel a little bit looser. Claude can start to forget what it was working on. It can start to forget some of the instructions that you gave it. One instruction that I always give Claude is that I don't want it to mention itself in git commit messages. But I have to tell it that every single time. I have it so it's memorized, but even still, Claude still forgets and puts its own name in git commit messages. The same is especially true for newer technologies. Payload CMS, Next.js 15 and up, like it doesn't quite fully understand what it's doing quite yet. So after you give it instructions, it'll start to forget the instructions that you gave it because it doesn't have that part memorized. It's not trained on that new data yet. So it'll never fully understand that new documentation that's come out after its training window. It will get better over time, but at the moment, you just need to be on top of it and continually reminding it what it's supposed to be working on. My ninth takeaway is that security is a big concern. One example here is that Claude Code hard-coded one of my API keys and committed it to my repo. And so one of my API keys was just out there in the ether. Luckily, I caught it pretty quickly, rotated the key, had Claude remove it, all of that stuff. But at the same time, like, I caught it. I wonder how many people haven't caught that. It doesn't happen very often, but I will say that Claude is not really necessarily concerned about security. It doesn't need to be. I mean, why would it? It's just trying to ship code. And that means security, authentication, authorization is your job. It's my job. We have to make sure that all of our code ships securely, that our user's data is protected, and that all of our data is protected because Claude, it's just ones and zeros to Claude. So we need to make sure that we're on top of it because we know what's at stake. Claude doesn't really understand that. 
But at the end of the day, if an API key is hard coded into my code and committed to my repo, it's not Claude's fault, that's mine. And my last takeaway is that with this being such a high cost for just the everyday user, I felt that I had to be on Claude code all day, every day for all 30 days. It was exhausting. Now, I don't expect everyone is going to work that way, but how I work is that I wanna get the most value out of this product as possible since I spent so much money on it. And that meant that I spent way more time with Claude than I had anticipated at first. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I was trying to maximize my time with Claude, but it ended up leading me to be a little bit less focused in my day-to-day -day work and more focused on, oh, what can I get done with Claude? So with all that to say, what are my final thoughts on Claude? I love it. Honestly, I just, I really like this tool. It's challenged me to grow as a developer. It's made my life way easier as a creator. Right now I can come up with a prototype of any working example of any tech that I want to and reverse engineer that tech to understand how it works and then teach that topic. That's wild. But I also see the downside. I haven't spent as much time in documentation as I have in the past. And that can cause me to fall behind in newer technology if I'm not careful. If I'm not cautious, I can trust Claude to implement something that I'm not 100% sure is going to work, or if it is going to work, that it's 100% secure. And if I don't know what I'm doing, I might ship bad code. I'll likely continue using Claude code on a reduced plan to continue getting over my hesitance in implementation. It's also going to help me speed up my redundant and mundane tasks. But I wanna hear what you think. Is Claude code a great tool or is it the end of developers as we know it? Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments and I will do my best to respond to all of them. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.